Welcome to a new episode of the seventh podcast season of New Female Leaders. My name is Caroline. I'm the founder of New Female Leaders, and I'm so excited for today's conversation because we have a very special guest all the way from the US. She's here to speak about a very important topic also in relation to leadership, namely the impact of nutrition and how we can empower our authentic selves through nourishment. Yes, we're going to speak about how food can be your medicine and how it also has been mine and how it can empower you as an authentic leader. And our regular listeners know that during my healing process to get pregnant, um, I've done the bean protocol. Well, what is the bean protocol? We're going to speak extensively about it. Um, It's a diet or actually a lifestyle that helped me tremendously in getting my hormones back in check. And because of it, I got my cycle back. Well, today I speak to bean protocol specialist, holistic nutrition practitioner and author of the book, Your Taste Buds Are Assholes, Unique Hammond. Yay! (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yes, so good to have you here, Unique. And um, well, let's dive in because I have so many questions to ask you. And uh, let's start with the first one because this is probably news for a lot of people. Uh, Why are our taste buds assholes? (laughs) Well, a lot of times what we crave, our taste, has nothing to do with what our body needs downstream. So a lot of times we're looking for that, you know, umami, but not really contemplating, does this meal have all the nutrients I need for a healthy body and not just for today, but for tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. So I called the book, your taste buds are assholes (laughs) because my taste buds were most definitely assholes. I was, you know, addicted to sugar and um, just eating for pleasure instead of really contemplating the health of my body. Right, right. And I recognize that so much, right? I mean, we can definitely crave something and that you know, okay, is this really what I need? And I find it also so funny. Um, uh, once I learned that when I was craving chocolate, uh, that if I would eat nuts instead, the, the craving for the chocolate would actually, um, yeah, go away just because apparently my body needed magnesium. I believe that was the the principle behind it, right? A lot of my clients tell me they're craving chocolate because they must need magnesium. But um, usually a lot of times oh. we crave sweet things before right. our cycles, like, or oh, yeah. um, stressful situations. If our blood sugar is dipping, like we'll crave something, a quick release material. I call it like the sugar, which is a quick glucose in the body and energy. Mm. Um, so there could be a few reasons why somebody craves chocolate magnesium could definitely be one of them but if you're eating a whole foods diet you're probably getting a lot of magnesium just from the food you eat as well Mm. Um, but nuts would be satiating because they're such a nutrient dense food so they're going to satiate um, hunger and they're a slower energy too so we won't find ourselves being jacked up a lot of people who eat sugar won't be jacked up and and then they'll fall again and then they'll look for the next hit to get jacked up again so Yeah. yeah and and I believe that a lot of people have this sugar addition, right? Yes. <laughs> like yes. perhaps we all, we're all kind of a little bit addicted to it. Oh yeah. It's um, glucose is our main source of energy. So mm. something that is quick, um, like sugar is going to give us that quick energy. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a natural draw for us. I would say wanting sugar is probably a natural thing because of that quick energy that it gives us. And, and our brain uses so much of the energy that we consume and use is used by our brain. So if you think about it, if you're at work and you're tired, you're going to grab something quick for that energy to get you through your day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I would love to continue talking about sugar and chocolate, but actually we're going to speak about beans. <laughs> Sounds a little bit less sexy, but, um, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and before we're going to do that, um, I would love to dive shortly into your personal recovery process from Crohn's disease, um, has been a, a, a long and very tough one. Um, and you, 
uh, yeah, finally you uh, at the end when you were like, okay, I'm I'm kind of desperate. I don't know what to do anymore. You learned about the Bean Protocol. It's a diet um, or a protocol developed by uh, Karen Hurt, mm-hmm. and it kind of was your last resort. And what you also describe in your book, it is that, it, and I recognize this. This is it. It was so contradictory. Um, contradictory to to start eating legumes had to start eating beans while you were in severe pain right and, and so but they were your lifesavers so let's dive into your journey shortly to to give our listeners a bit of background on how you moved from well chocolate to beans i would say <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i had to put down the chocolate yeah um so I, yeah, I, I mean, I was the girl who had chocolate bars in her bag, uh, her gym bag, her office, uh, healthy chocolate, um, and really just loved eating for pleasure. So when I, um, my stomach was always kind of anxious, um, more like IBS-y off and on, but in my late twenties, things just got kind of worse for me where I felt my stomach issues were happening all the time. And um, so I would kind of like eat simple or not have any alcohol or not have sugar for a little while and things would settle down. Mm. And then I would kind of go back to my old ways, of eating the foods that I enjoy. And, and then my stomach just stopped getting, feeling better again. Like even with my old tricks of like resting it for a little while or not going out and, um, and it got just really bad, so bad that I would smell, um, like alcohol and I would be sick or I'd smell perfumes and I would feel sick and, Um, you know, it was, it was kind of a pretty major downward spiral really. And uh, after a couple of years of trying to do things naturally, my doctor, my Chinese medicine doctor said, I think you should see a GI. And from there, I probably delayed doing a colonoscopy and I did every test under the sun. And, um, until finally we couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And I did a colonoscopy and I came up with Crohn's disease. And it was interesting because it was in that moment. I was so afraid to get a diagnosis. Um, I was just scared. Like, what if it's cancer or something? Mm. I, you know, there's just part of me that was like, I just don't want to know. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to know, but I don't want to know. Um, and when he said, oh, you have this autoimmune disorder, Crohn's disease, and you'll have it for the rest of your life. There was suddenly this fighter in me that was like, Crohn's disease, what is it? Where does it come from? How do you cure it? Why does it happen? And there were so many questions I had that he didn't really answer to my satisfaction. Mm. So I felt very devastated on my way home. But then something happened that was surprising to me because I was not a very secure person or um, confident person. I almost lived a good life despite the fact that I didn't feel those things, Um, you know, um, a successful life, I guess, not yeah, because you were Not modeling, that. you were like, yeah. Yeah, Super and successful. had a wonderful career. And yeah. um, I was, despite my insecurities and my lack of confidence, I I was always showing up, you mm. know, anyway. And I felt within the next couple of days after the diagnosis, I felt this real kind of surging in myself of, oh, if they don't know why you have this and they don't know how to cure it, it means you can cure it. And I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I really wanted to do it naturally. And so I began the journey of exploring diets and everything I tried really from the gaps to the breaking the vicious cycle to Ayurveda to Chinese medicine, nothing really made me feel better. Everything would make me feel better ish. And, um, and I was just really downward spiral. I'm five, seven, and I was 90 pounds and just in horrible pain all the time. And I should also mention that I had really horrible, painful periods too. So most women don't know that, you know, things are tend to be a little more inflammatory around our cycles anyway. Mm. Mine, I had, my doctor said I had endometriosis. So mine were incredibly inflammable. So every cycle I got, I would, no matter how, what state my Crohn's was in at the time, it would go into a massive flare for three weeks at a time. Okay. Um, and then I would have one week where I was kind of semi-human, basically. So the bean protocol found me, and I was kind of at the point where I was really ready for medication. I it felt like I'd exhausted all of the anti-inflammatory protocols out there. 
for anything autoimmune didn't matter I was just like you know give it to me and and then of course when you hear beans you're like <laughs> what <Beans>. yeah <laughs> First of all, the doctor told me to stay far away from fiber. So no. Um, and, you know, I just remember thinking like, this is a bad idea. Um, but yet over the weekend after getting, reading the book, um, just, I would say half of the book, I, then I started eating beans. I went to the market, I got canned beans, I rinsed them and I just started like a bite at a time. And, um, and I didn't notice anything bad right away. I mean, I was already gassy and bloated and anybody who knows Crohn's knows that it's a very unsexy, um, disease. Yeah. You, you, you speak about your, uh, in your book about it also about that people with Crohn's disease, they kind of tend to speak a lot about toilet visits because that's kind of a big part of oh, your you life, live in right? The toilet. Yeah. You live oh, in the yeah. toilet. You live in the toilet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had spent a lot of my life worried about what I looked like and how I presented and, mm. you know, wanting to be appealing. And here I was with the most uh, least appealing disease on planet Earth, which is gassy and bloated all the time and running to the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, I am supposed to be humbled. That is what I'm supposed to be right now is humbled. So mm. yeah, I was very humbled by the experience. But um, ultimately, it was a long road to heal. And in the process of healing, I healed my relationship with myself, um, my relationship with my body, which had always been skin deep. My approach to health had always been skin deep and and nothing else. It was like, can I fit into my clothes? Do I look good? It was never, do I feel good? Do I feel vibrant? Am I sleeping well? Like I never asked the deeper questions. I was just really focused on the superficial. Um, so by the time I went into remission, I had had a full boot camp on felt love. Wow. Wow. And, 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 and to, to give a, a bit of perspective, like how bad it was, I mean, you couldn't, couldn't even handle water, right? It was, no. it was really, 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 really bad. I couldn't handle water. I couldn't go. I couldn't, I mean, I spent weeks at a time. I was an executive producer at the time, uh, working with wonderful directors and a wonderful company. And I would spend weeks at a time, um, in bed with, you know, not being able to, well, not being able to not move. Cause when you're in that much pain, I was in so much pain that it was radiating up my back and down my legs. And, um, the only movement I had enough energy to do was to the bathroom and back to my bed again for weeks on end. And yeah. it was debilitating. My daughters were young at the time. They were five and 10 and, um, five and seven. And, you know, they didn't really understand. They just spent a lot of time in the bedroom with me, um, when they would come home from school and, um, you know, I couldn't like, sometimes I could lay them down, but I was in so much pain that I would rock all the time and I didn't sleep. I, um, I maybe slept, I, I, I call it sleep, but maybe two hours in a 24 hour period, I would pass out from mm -hmm. pain, but otherwise I just couldn't sleep. And I didn't want to become addicted to painkillers. So I was very conscious of like, okay, do I do painkillers? Do I not do painkillers? Um, one of my doctors at the time said, unique, you should smoke weed. You're nauseous 24 seven. You're in pain all the time. Um, the, and the pain and, you know, smoking marijuana might actually help with the pain as well. And mm. I was really resistant to that because my daughters were young and I was like, and this is a long time ago. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, so in California smoking weed, a, not something you did, um, not legally anyway, there were a few pharmacies that you could get doctor's notes for. And that's what my doctor did. He was like, you need, if you're not going to take painkillers, because the only painkillers that took the edge off were um, Percocet, things, okay. hardcore painkillers that were very highly addictive. And um, I was just like, mm, I don't want to go down that road. Right. So he wrote me a prescription for weed. And, and actually that was the beginning um, around the time I would say eight months later, I found the bean protocol or the bean protocol found me. And I was so used to not being able to eat because of my nausea that, um, when I finally found the protocol, I was literally smoking 12 times a day just to keep the nausea at bay so I could work. And so I could, um, an acid reflux. I mean, it was just horrible. I was an absolute mess. I mean, oh. my hair was falling out from lack of nutrients because I'd been sick for up around three years at this point yeah. and, um, rashes all over my body. And like I said, I was 90 pounds. Um, and 
I, I was, I literally was at the point where I was hopeless and helpless and, and felt really defeated. So yeah, when the bean protocol found me, I was probably at the lowest low that I had ever been in my life. And I really didn't know if I was going to survive, to be honest. Right. And, and, and then, then you walk to the supermarket and you're, you're going to buy cans of beans, right? Uh, so like, okay. So, so for our listeners, let's dive a bit into the principles behind the bean protocol, because, um, probably they're all wondering, okay, if, if it was that bad, how can beans be, um, the solution? So for me, I, I really didn't know from, from her book, um, I really couldn't glean what I should be doing for my condition. So at the time, the only things I could eat were potatoes and meat. Right. And that was like, really, that was the only thing I could tolerate. I couldn't tolerate bread. I couldn't tolerate eggs. I couldn't tolerate, I literally was just meat and, and potatoes and water kind of, but like I said, I was emaciated. So I wasn't really, I wasn't really getting nutrients at all. And what I could glean from her book was that I should eat beans. So I literally just started adding in a couple of tablespoons of beans and what I understood. And obviously I've, I'm now a practitioner of this protocol and work with it every day. Yeah. Is that the soluble fiber in beans yeah. it binds to the bile from your liver and gallbladder yeah. um, in your small intestine and it takes it out of your body. And part of um, her hypothesis of um, why that works is that for whether it's an autoimmune disorder of any kind is that there's some level of bile toxicity going on from a lifetime of exposure to toxins um, in the food in the water and the medications and whatever it is that triggers that epigenetic um, my case, it's Crohn's disease for somebody else that might be Hashimoto's or, you know, there's always interesting gut implications with most autoimmune disorders. Mm. Um, and so understanding the principles, I started just nibbling on beans. And then on Monday I called her office when the, and she was closed and she doesn't practice any more actively like she used to, but, um, I then called again on Tuesday and I made an appointment with my, with her and, you know, that's kind of where we began. But what I will say is that I was able to start with beans right away. And, and a lot of people can, to be honest, mm. um, with autoimmune Crohn's colitis. Uh, I have a lot of my clients who I can start pretty right away with beans and some I have to do more of a, uh, of a, of a reset, a gut reset with before I can introduce the beans. So I don't want uh, your listeners to think, oh, I have Crohn's, you know, if let's you're go to active, the supermarket, <laughs> yeah, let's go to the supermarket and start eating beans. Because if you have uh, bleeding, like there's different protocols that you would need to consider, um, with bleeding. I, I was not bleeding at the time when I started eating beans. Um, so I was able to enter them in and I was already gassy and bloated. I, I looked like I was nine months pregnant already on my little 90 pound body. Mm. Um, so I didn't really notice the beans being more gassy, although I've heard from my family that it was a very hard time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, so what I find super interesting and, and maybe good also to, to dive a bit deeper into is like, is the mechanism. So you you speak about bowel, you speak, you speak about your liver and gas, gallbladder, um, and, uh, and, and, and on how this bowel is, um, toxified, uh, through several reasons, uh, really, um, can 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 we go into the the mechanism step by step and why soluble fibers are then so important? And yeah, to me, when I read about these principles, it made so much sense. I was like, ah, so this is how the body works. I mean, should work. This is this is the ingenious, yeah, system really that how our body works and the only thing we have to do or the only thing but what is an, um, the thing we need to do is to give it the right tools through our food 
So yeah, right, and which is yeah. then soluble fi. So so can can we um, um, yeah go through the principles like step by step so everybody understands them really clearly because it it to me it was like ah okay you know light light bulb uh, switched on or something. Yes, and I've heard a saying that anything that is really important should be given away for free. And I believe that information like this should be given away, should be taught. Right. Because we live in a world now where our body needs our support more than ever. Mm. And um, just because of all of the man made toxins that we are exposed to in our environment, in our personal care products, in our hair dye, in our food choices, like we're just exposed. And um, I don't think, well, actually, supposedly our ancestors would eat up to 100 grams of fiber a day. Um, and human, most humans maybe get 10, 15 grams of fiber max in their diet. Wow. Um, so, so how it works is we have something in our body called the enterohepatic recirculation, which is how we recycle the bile. And then we have the little holding tank, which is our gallbladder. Okay. That when we eat something fatty, it squirts a lot of bile in that very concentrated holding tank. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on our diet and our lifestyle, that bile can get very toxic and sludgy. Um, some people will start to uh, have stones in their gallbladder. Yeah. Um, but through this diet, I've helped a lot of people dissolve those stones and not have to lose their gallbladder too. So so in this enterohepatic recirculation, the soluble fiber is one of the very few things that is strong enough to hold the bile, which is very caustic, and it actually binds it. And instead of recycling it at the tune of 95%, you actually begin to clear it out of your body. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people say, well, unique, if I'm eating beans all day, am I clearing out too much bile? And the answer is no, your liver is always making new bile all the time. It's basically a machine that's happening. And in that bile are toxins and fats and um, hormones and all kinds of stuff. So the regular clearing of that bile is such a key. And I have found with working with the protocol over the last, I mean, I've been on it for almost 10 years in January, and I've been guiding clients through the protocol over the last six years. Mm -hmm. And before that, um, with Karen, just um, on our like I would do it for free because I had a full-time career and I just really loved, um, you know, being able to give back to, to everyone, this not incredible knowledge, um, before I switched my careers to actually do it full time. Right. But, um, that clearing of that bile is such an incredible detox. I mean, I grew up in California where detox is like, everybody's detoxing. I'm going to do a juice detox and I'm going to do this detox. Yeah. And I was like, hold on, this is like the mother of detoxes and it's natural. And it's from a, a whole food source, which is really beautiful. Yeah, well, thank you for this clarification, because I, 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 once you understand that this is actually how the body works and how we are actually not supporting that system, uh, since we are most of the time eating not enough fibers, not enough soluble fibers, um, it makes, makes so much sense that the only thing that your body can do is to kind of recycle uh, those toxins and, and you have this vicious cycle uh, and depending, of course, on how long and how, uh, let's say, um, toxic is your lifestyle uh, and, 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 and your circumstances, uh, the toxicity will add up, I guess. Um, so you also mentioned hormones and, and other things that were in the bowel and that um uh, uh well that's also for me an important point as um yeah we've spoken to uh we've spoken about autoimmune uh, system diseases uh, your crohn disease uh but for me it actually really helped to get my hormones in sync um yeah let's dive a bit into that because yeah, a lot of women that I that I speak to, that I meet, and I and I'm sure you do too, have hormonal imbalances, um, um, have issues, uh, it, yeah, during their cycle, and we often kind of accept it also because we we're told that uh, it's normal to have pain, it's normal to have PMS, it's normal to have all these things, um, but what I have experienced 
uh, by in in the in the months um, and that I've done the protocol is that I I um, got, got rid actually of all those issues around my cycle. So and I and and for the li- listeners, I didn't have a cycle for a long time, and I got it back just by following the protocol. So let's dive a bit into the hormonal part. So I see women with who've lost their cycle. Mm. Um, I see women who get their cycle too often and bleed too much. Yeah. Um, I see women with PCOS, um, you know, PMS, like for some women right after they ovulate, they start to feel irritable, their breasts get tender, um, their they start to get bloated because of the yeah. inflammatory prostaglandins that can start to rise. So uh, those are all hormone imbalances. These are not natural. These are not, women weren't supposed to be punished for being women. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you are suffering like that, that is your body speaking to you and saying, Hey, the way we're doing this life is not working and it's time to pause and, and have a look at diet and lifestyle. Stress is a huge factor but not just stress is like, oh, stress is bad. No, it's not because you can be in a powerful position and really love your job, but still incurring stress, you know, and uh, stress can be inflammatory. So to me, having a proper diet is such an incredible counterbalance to a wonderful, but potentially very stressful life. Mm. And women's hormones are like a symphony. We have this beautiful rising and falling of of estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. And, you know, if those things are out of balance, if one of those things are out of balance, the whole thing doesn't make sense the way it should. So the bean protocol can help with clearing the excess hormones, but also balancing the gut. The gut is such an important component for women and our estrogen uh, metabolism. Um, That's not the right word. It's more like the breaking down of estrogen. Mm -hmm. So, um, so a having a healthy gut b pulling out some of the bile so that you don't have this overproduction of hormones and begin to see relief my clients begin to see relief right away i have clients um, whose pain and and discomfort and irritability and sometimes even nausea and period poops start anywhere from two to three weeks out from their cycle and some even through if you have pcos it can actually affect your ovulation as well Mm. so the beans in these cases would be more frequent to help pull out more bile so that you can alleviate the body of some of these excess hormones, but also heal the gut, like having a healthy gut biome, um, eating a whole. So basically the bean protocol is a whole foods diet with a focus on fiber is how I describe it because you're eating a wonderful diet, but you're just focusing on increasing that fiber intake so that you're Um, your hormones are supported, your gallbladder is supported, it's heart healthy. So if you have blood sugar imbalances, which is a lot of times connected to PCOS, um, you're balancing your blood sugar. I mean, it's, I I just think it's just the best. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, and I I couldn't agree more. uh, But what I remember when I when I started this, um, and I and I believe you also mentioned this in the, um, the, the, um, uh, let's say the brochure or the or the book around the protocol. Um, when I when I shared with other people that I was was going was going to eat a lot of beans, that that I was following the bean protocol, I got a lot of skeptical responses, like, "Oh my God, um, is that healthy? Should should you, are are you only eating beans?" I said, "No," but you know that 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 was the idea of a lot of people. Um, oh, you must be super gassy. Uh, oh, I couldn't do that because I I get gassy immediately after beans and well i um uh can say from my own experience that all their their worries were well not based on any, anything and they're kind of myths but i'm curious about what your point of view is on the negative image of beans well imagine the first person who discovered the earth wasn't flat Right. <laughs> right. And it was like, Hey guys, the earth wasn't flat. And everybody's like, you're so wrong. This is so weird. Like we, it's funny because we all love to be individuals, but nobody likes to be different. So when somebody's doing something different, it's almost like, 
whoa, what are you doing? And that was the response I had in my own life, by the way. It was like, when I started to tell people I was doing this bean thing, they were like, whoa, what are you doing? That's right? so crazy. Yeah. yeah, beans are bad. And I had such a lack of confidence that I would go home and I'd be like, oh, I, I shouldn't be eating beans. Even though they were helping me, I was so influenced by the negative feedback that mm. I was like, oh, I, I I shouldn't be eating these beans. And you know, and then I would start to feel worse. And I'd be like, wait a minute, that's silly. Why am I allowing other people's negative opinion of, of, of this, which I feel is really helping me affect me. And what I started to do is just not tell people about what I was doing. And I would just eat vegetables and protein when I would go out. And I just wouldn't talk about it anymore because I had to build some confidence around like, Hey, this works and it's good. It's working for me. If Mm. I don't care what you think anyway, side note, but beans, you know, it's really your microbiome. So some people are missing microbes because of an unhealthy diet, taking a lot of medications, taking a lot of um, antibiotics. So when you start to put fiber in there, the microbiome begins to ferment them. And you want this process because that fermentation process actually feeds your gut biome. It's food for your microbiome. So there is some fermenting that goes on, but that's not a negative thing. It's actually a positive thing um, because the first of all, gas is really natural. Everybody has it. Um, I actually have people who come to me who are upset because they can't fart. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> believe it or not, yes. that's a thing. Yeah, it's like, Unique, I can't fart. And I'm like, I got you. Um, <laughs> But so beans don't, beans might make it seem like you're gassier um, than you would have been. But also most people, they sit down to a whole meal of beans, like a chili or something versus just integrating it slowly into their lives so that their microbiome gets used to breaking it down and using it. And it becomes most of my clients within a few weeks, some, the longest is like three months, six months, maybe depending on the hormone imbalance, because also the excess hormones and the excess adrenaline will cause you to ferment a little bit more. Yeah. So most of my clients notice within the first couple of weeks that dissipating, if there is some fermentation, but it is, it is, it is a, a kind of a blown out of proportion myth. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and then there are also a lot of stories around, um, toxicity of beans and, and, and uh, yeah. So, uh, which is then (laughs) kind of the opposite that this whole protocol is, is, is doing, um, it's just misinformation. It's misunderstanding, misinformation. Most of the people who are saying beans are, have problems, uh, have a platform where they're selling products Mm, mm. and, and they're selling a product, a, a, you know, a lifestyle as I am with the bean protocol, but everything I'm putting forward is a whole foods diet. I'm not demonizing any foods. The foods I take off the table are man-made foods, right? Processed foods and um, processed sugars and stuff like that. So, yeah. And depending on the protocol, like I have layers of protocol from healing protocols to lifestyle plans, which are a lot more open and mm. less um, focused on healing. But lectins are not bad for us. The cooking process cooks them out. Um, most plants have um, lectins or oxalates, or and they're actually finding that um, they're cancer protectant and oxalates chelate heavy metals. So there's actually the side that um, the people who are saying that they're bad, the fear mongers, I call them, they're not really talking about the the full picture, they're really focusing on the fear element. And what happened is in the lab, they extracted lectin from the the bean or from the, it, it's in vegetables too. Yeah. They're extracting it from, they're extracting that one element from it and then testing it on rats. Whereas in real life, we don't extract one element and eat it. We're no. eating a whole food with a whole complex matrix of nutrients and vitamins and et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's really taking this tiny piece of information. And uh, I think the term is um, making a mole into um, a mountain into a molehill right. know, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a molehill into a mountain anyway. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, and, and what you also just ma- mentioned is that of course, depending on your, the purpose, uh, whether it's more lifestyle or healing, uh, of course, there are also things that you don't eat anymore or you don't, yeah, you try to avoid. Um, so, uh, yeah, you spoke about sugars, you, uh, uh, processed foods, uh, but also more like the stimulating uh, things like coffee, um, 
uh, caffeinated teas. Um, so, and I, I, I did this all and it was, um, well, I, I wasn't a big coffee drinker for instance. So for me, it was quite easy. Um, same for sugar, I guess, except the chocolate, uh, which, uh, <laughs> the, the, the 80, 90% chocolate, but still, um, but what I noticed is that pretty quick, uh, after a few days of, of course, getting, getting used to it. I didn't have the cravings anymore and I started to feel so good. Like I, I, I shared with you earlier that I've never felt so energized, so like uplifted. So I, um, I would say even vibrant, um, whilst doing this protocol. And, um, then, then we also spoke about earlier on, uh, yeah. Um, how nutritious and 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 food are basically related to authenticity because uh, um, there 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 was definitely an, a difference between the Caroline before the Bean Protocol and uh, and and during the protocol. So I found it super interesting from a uh, from authentic leadership point of view as well. Oh yeah. So imagine you're in a leadership role and your period is turning you into a different person a week out of every month, two weeks out of every month. Um, you're managing with painkillers, you're tired, you're not sleeping well. Um, imagine trying to show up in an authentic way and mm. trying to show up powerfully and not irritable and not snapping and um, I think women get this bad rap because we have this hormone, we ha often have hormonal imbalances, mm. whereas um, imagine then a woman who is fueling her body to be a powerful machine, to be able to show up in authenticity and to be powerful and um, compassionate and not irritable and without tender breasts that you're sitting there, you know, waiting for the meeting to be over because you need to use the bathroom because you have the period poops or whatever it is. Like imagine being able to just show up as yourself and powerful and vibrant and well and not using all of these crutches to get through your day. I mean, to me, for women in leadership role, for all women, because all women are leaders in, 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 in different ways and in different circles in their life, whether it's a stay-at-home mom who is the showing up in a powerful way for her children, mm. imagine being able to show up in a powerful way for anybody in your life um, because you have nourished yourself properly and, um, and you're taking care of yourself and you are prioritizing yourself. I think that's something that women have a really hard time doing is prioritizing ourselves. So imagine you decide, okay, unique, I'm game. I'm going to do the bean protocol, but then everybody in your life and you feel really great. Let's just say you feel really great. You don't feel gassy and you feel this vibrant health, but people in your life are like, ew, what are you doing? That's so weird. And you have to be able to have the confidence to be like, yeah, I'm taking care of myself and farting is awesome, by the way. So, you know, <laughs> you just have the confidence to be like, yeah, I'm taking, I'm showing up for myself. And I also think being a leader is showing up for yourself first, because how can you show up for anybody else until you've done that, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, the most powerful thing I've ever done is take care of myself because I have so much more capacity for everybody in my life, my clients, my family, my children, my friends. I have capacity that I didn't have before. When I had painful periods, I having endometriosis, my pain would start two to three weeks out and through ovulation and it was agony and I was like a praying mantis. You walk into the same room and just turn and look at me and I'd be like, you know? <laughs> so I, it really was an incredible change in my life to realize how powerful nutrition is. It is not to be taken lightly. No, definitely not. And, and, and what I also find important is that uh, we acknowledge that we don't have to kind of live through um, um, menstrual pain, uh, PMS, all, all these things that kind of are, yeah, um, yeah, almost expected. Um, and then there are, um, of course, painkillers, uh, available everywhere. Um, I, I hear women that have to, you know, stay at home for, for a few days because they just, they just cannot get out of bed uh, they cannot do their work so and 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 what I really love also about um, the whole idea uh, of yeah eating yourself into 
uh, yeah, let's say the the best your your best version or your authentic self um, is that um, you don't really have to have this big issue like like you with your Crohn's disease or 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 me with with the um, uh, yeah with have, having no cycle or before that I had those heavy bleeds. Um, you don't have to get that far in order to make simple changes uh, and add, for instance, soluble fiber, aka beans, into your lifestyle. And I and I and what I also really love about how you approach it, uh, uh, your company is also named "You're Great." You know, it's 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 all about self empowerment and taking leadership and ownership over uh, over your. Um, yeah, your your personal health, your personal self, uh, and and take it, yeah, and from there go in back into the world, right? Because if we don't feed ourselves in the right way, if we don't nourish ourselves, how can we then show up for the rest of the world, right? So, um, yeah, to 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 me, like, and especially also for women, and and perhaps you recognize this. Well, at least this was for me. I kind of. Ha- pushed through all, all the all the issues that I had, you know, I was like, you know, don't complain, Caroline, just continue, just show up, um, which was obviously very, um, uh, well, I completely missed the point of, you know, filling your cup, your own cup first, I guess, before you give to others. Yeah, most, uh, I'll speak for myself. I was used to starving my body to fit into clothes, working out too much, um, drinking coffee to get going in the morning, drinking wine to come down at night. Mm. I was used to medicating myself in all ways to show up for my life. And that's not authentic. That isn't us in our most authentic power. That is kind of band-aids stuck all over me, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I'm showing up, nobody can see my band-aids because everybody has their own band-aids. But what if there's another way? What if, um, you know, alcohol really disrupts the gut biome and hormones and, um, you know, feeds cancer? Like there's so many reasons to minimize or consider giving up alcohol, especially if you're a woman with hormonal imbalances. Mm-hmm. Um because it also disrupts sleep. So part of the healing plan is pulling out alcohol along with sugar. Uh, we let the body begin to heal and imagine not needing coffee to wake up. Imagine not needing alcohol to come down at night. Imagine uh, showing up vibrant and feeling wonderful. Is that every day of your life? No, nobody's going to have that every day of their no. life, but I have it most days. Most days I go to sleep and I'm tired and I'm not wired and tired and racing mind and anxious. Oh, that was the other thing. I had anxiety all the time, like just really a lot. And I don't have any anymore. Like even today, normally I would show up, uh, you know, when I first started doing podcasts, I'd show up so anxious. And now I just show up. And I'm like, I'm really excited to talk to you today. <laughs> yeah. And I feel good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What a difference, right? So um, for our listeners, um, they're all super busy women. Uh, they want to make an impact. They're they're they're, and they might think now, okay, yeah, this sounds great, but I don't even have time to eat <laughs> during the day. Um, you know, problem so, number one. <laughs> yeah, that's problem number one. Um, but let's okay, they have very bu- busy lives. Uh, how would you advise to integrate this these principles into their lifestyle? Do you have any so tips? So if you're eating as an omnivore, I'm an om- omnivore. Some of my clients are vegetarian, whatever it is, whatever you're already, the healthy things that you're already doing, you're just adding some legumes to it. You don't have to cook your own legumes. You don't have to be a chef. When I started this protocol, I was opening cans of here in the States, we have Eden beans and I would rinse them and put them in a Tupperware and I would just throw them into salads. Um, I loved making lentil soups. I would do lentil soups uh, and bring that to work. So I was a busy executive at the time when I was sick and and when I was healing and I used to get whack jars, like glass jars, and I would fill them with lentil soups. I couldn't eat salads for a while because Crohn's disease, um, that was the very last thing I was able to start eating again. Right. Uh, I can't break down any. So if you have gut issues, raw food is the hardest thing for you to break down. So mm. just baseline cook everything. Um, But, you know, a lot of people 
I mean, you can actually look, get legumes anywhere if you don't eat legumes, if you've avoided legumes because of the silly rhetoric in the health world. I would just start slow with a couple of tablespoons in your favorite salad or um, throw some into your bowl of soup. Uh, what I do, what I used to do when I had to go to an office every day is I would batch cook on Sundays, a soup, a lentil salad, and uh, with canned or without whatever works for you frozen vegetables so you're not spending all that time chopping in the kitchen mm. there's so many ways to do it the bottom line as any leader will know is where there's a will there's a way and where there isn't there is plenty of excuses so if you are a powerful person and you are not willing to show up for yourself that's problem number two <laughs> right right so um well that's very that's very clear at least and 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 i i can speak from my own experience that uh, food prepping uh, doesn't have to take a whole day. It it's not difficult. I I have a very busy schedule myself, and it's just simply adding the beans, following the principles that that will already make such a difference. And when you do um, suffer from very severe uh, issues like the autoimmune system uh, issues we talked about uh, uh, and or hormone issues um, well I would definitely recommend to uh, call or send a message to unique uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's also something I definitely want to say but um, what I was wondering because I have um, once I got my cycle back um, I slowly started to move into a kind of, and that's also what you recommend on a certain moment, you can move into a kind of 80, 20, uh, lifestyle. And, um, when I was preparing for this interview, I had to admit to myself like, okay, Caroline, what about the, the amount of legumes or yeah, you are eating now? Mm, they're probably not, not the 80, 20, uh, anymore. So... I kind of lost it a bit. Um, well, of course, um, this interview has um, already uh, sharpened my uh, <laughs> my mind, my will <laughs> again to get back to it. Um, also, because it's not uh, not difficult. It's more that you do have to think about it. It has to become a habit, um, and uh, I guess also because of my pregnancy. Well, anyway, you see a lot of excuses. Here they go. Um, but let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm br brutally honest. I have excuses too. But let's let's see how I can get back on track. So um, is it then the same advice you just gave? Add the beans back into your meals or do you have any other... For someone who's healthy and just wants to be healthier, look at where you can minimize things that impair health. So alcohol, smoking, um, sugar, white, a lot of white flour. Right. Um, these things are not, these things should, I, I, I call eating for health should be the main actor. And then you have cameos from other things like, oh, if you're a healthy person and you want a treat or whatever, sugar, let's not even call it a treat. I think treats should be something that's actually good for us. Mm. But um, let's say sugar comes in occasionally, alcohol comes in occasionally, cigarettes should never come in. So I'm not even going to make them a supporting actor. No. Um, you know, so you have the base of your life, you are supporting your cellular health, because humans love to talk about living in the present. But we also need to forecast or backcast what we want our old age to look like. And if we don't support our cellular health now, mm. what kind of older age are we going to have? And for some people, depending on where they are in their life, in their 20s or 30s, honestly, I have a lot of 20-year-olds who are already thinking about their fertility and how they want to live and how they want to show up in their life in a powerful way. And I have 30-year-olds thinking about fertility and I have 40 year olds thinking about menopause. I mean, women have a lot to think about in the course of our wellness. Um, and to show up powerfully every step of the way, we show up first for ourselves. We, it just has to be that way. And, and that was a hard lesson for me because I was a person who prioritized everybody but myself. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so if you are eating for health as your 
baseline, then you are ensuring um, a certain amount of health for your cellular well well being, basically. Um, if you are unwell, then a healing protocol is going to be called on to course correct the imbalances, right? But for you in pregnancy, I work with a lot of women to help them get pregnant. And then I support them through pregnancy. And the first trimester is tough because of the nausea. The second trimester, things open up. It's less, it's a less restrictive protocol. It's more of an 80-20, uh, 90-10, depending on the person and the imbalances that are going on. And then after when the baby is born, some babies are totally fine with cruciferous vegetables and legumes and some babies get gassy and then you just have to pull them out. Um, because of breast, it's like, like they, 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 they get it via breastfeeding. Or, oh yeah. And yeah. if you, you don't want a gassy baby, because a gassy baby is going to keep you up all night, tossing right. and turning, trying to release gas. And that's no fun for anybody even though baby farts are really cute. Um, so a lot of time, my nursing mamas will just pull them off of the table for a little while and then bring them back in when baby's older. Some For some people, it's six months old. Um, and then just continue to eat for health because the health, um, well, that's a lot of breast milk that uh, women are creating. So yeah, uh, hydration is important. Um, protein is important. Vegetables are really in healthy fats and um, so yeah, it's really different for each person, but I would say for the general person listening who I, let's just assume has pretty good health, um, adding soluble fiber into your life in the form of beans or psyllium husk in a small way. And I say a small way and nobody listens to me, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm like a couple of tablespoons and then they're like, unique, I ate three cans of beans and I am so sick. And I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's a good addition to to say. Like, um, we're really talking about a few tablespoons per 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 meal. We're, we're, meal to start, right? Yeah. We're we're not yeah. speaking about eli- eating chili uh, sin carne for, for for breakfast <laughs> or something. Yeah. You know, so don't, don't. And even if you add it one meal a day, like let's just not even get crazy pants and ask you to ask add it to yeah, three meals a just, day. Let's just say one meal a day. You add chickpeas or, um, you know, lentils, like I don't want to overwhelm anybody with soluble fiber either. Just see where you can get creative and start to integrate it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you we, we started off with the question, why are your taste buds assholes? Um, but let's say, uh, we want to make them our friends or allies. Um, how how can we how can we yeah trust them how how can we make them our friends well what i started to do is ask myself once i eat this what is this doing for me downstream is mm. this creating inflammation or is this feeding my cellular health and and also i just began to feel my body and what i realized was coffee made me anxious and ultimately more tired for me personally that's not the case for everybody I, uh, sugar I, I made, have that too with coffee. It's very funny. It makes yeah. me more tired. Yeah. Yeah. More tired. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Um, and then sugar makes me irritable and mess. It. I personally have blood had have have had blood sugar imbalances in my life and mm. sugar. I just don't do well with it. So I started to pay attention to how my body feels. I don't do well with alcohol. I have known that since my 20s. But it was a good example of wanting to fit in, wanting to do what everybody else was doing. So I would drink and then everybody would go home and probably fall into a drunken sleep. And I would go home and sit on the toilet and feel sick. So racing heart. Um, So I just began to listen to my body. But also if you cut out those highly palatable foods, the sugars, the fried foods, the processed foods, and give your taste buds a break for a couple of months, you taste food differently. And that was actually how I retrained my taste buds to be my, um, like support my health instead of going against my health. Because I would say the first 29 years of my life, my taste buds definitely didn't care about what happened downstream. Right. Yeah. And I recognize this so much because basically after even already a few weeks, I, I just noticed that, that I just, I didn't have any cravings anymore. And mm-hmm. I, I even started to, 
yeah, sometimes I had these, you know, like really cravings for, okay, I need to eat something right now. And, and, and of course that was then probably sugar or uh, uh, related, but I just didn't have that anymore. So also my meals became less, you know, less mm, need, needed or something. I mean, I of course ate for, um, to feed my body, to feed my cellular system, but not anymore um, as a kind of, okay, if I don't eat now, I, I, um, I faint or something, you know, do, do you follow me there? So the, the whole, also actually the focus around food, um, yeah, it completely changed in, 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 instead of thinking about it all the time, like, okay, what do I do? I want to eat? What do I need to eat? Oh, I'm so, I really crave this or that it became something to support my body and and not a big deal anymore. Whilst a lot of people think that, oh, when I'm going to follow up this A protocol or diet, and this is very often with non-whole food diets, at least that's what I hear, is that is that you, you, your focus on food becomes, you know, even more. But I, I noticed that actually my focus on food became less. That's probably also because your blood sugar was balanced. So a lot of times when we get irritable or feel like we're going to faint because we're so tired or we crash after we, so we're so hungry, we're so hungry. And then we eat and then we crash after we eat. Like those are all speaking to blood sugar imbalances. So right. when you eat a healthy diet, your blood sugar is balanced. So even if you are going a little bit of distance between one meal to the next, you're not feeling that crash. Um, you're not craving that quick glucose, which is what a lot of times that feeling of like thinking about food all the time is like you're needing energy. So again, since we're talking to powerful, sorry, if we're talking about powerful women, you're using your brain a lot and your brain is going to be using a lot of your nutrients. So if you're not powering your life with proper healthy nutrients, um, then that the brain is also suffering for that. And also the blood sugar and everything else. So you just, yeah. So you're, what you're explaining, what it sounds like to me is just really balanced blood sugar where you're, and also your cravings are not owning you anymore. You're not going, Hey, when, where can I stop and get myself a candy bar or exactly. some, you know, yeah, you're, you're, you're owning your nutrition instead of your cravings owning you. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Unique. Is there anything you want to leave us with? with? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I just, I love humans. I love our struggle to be better. I love our desire to take care of ourselves. I love the falling down, forgetting to take care of ourselves, getting back up, taking care of ourselves. I love all of it. I think it's an incredible, the human journey is an incredible one. And, you know, I struggled, even though I was incredibly ill, I struggled to take care of myself and I struggled to make new habits. So often our old habits, um, want to stay the same. We feel safe. We feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, our, a lot of people's identities are wrapped up in the way that they eat socially, or are they a foodie or, you know, what their identity is with their food. And so it's really hard to change habits to prioritize our health, but you can do it. You just start, you know, little and just slowly keep, you know, getting rid of the things that don't serve you. And um, before you know it, you're eating well and feeling well and uh, there's no complaints around your health anymore, which is a, a gift. It's hard to imagine, but it's a gift. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Unique. Um, if people would like to know more about you or know more about your protocol, where can they find you? You can Google the bean protocol and you'll find me. I'm at yourgreat.com. I'm on Instagram at Unique Hammond, U-N-I-Q-U-E Hammond, H-A-M-M-O-N-D. Yes, yes. And on behalf of Unique, we have a really exciting giveaway. You can win an audible version of our book, Your Taste Buds Are Assholes. Yes. But also you can win one of the two new client consults. So that's also super exciting. Uh, thank you so much, Unique. Do you, and if you think, okay, I want to win this, I want to uh, win that client consult or the book, it's very simple. Make a print screen of this podcast, post it on your Instagram stories, tag us, new female leaders and Unique. And um, then we share it with our community. And if you do this before February 28th, 2023, 
we will pick a winner. And um, yeah, I hope you are the one. Hey, and if you're listening to Spotify, via Spotify, uh, we would love, love, love um, you to give us a ranking. It's super easy. You can do that on your phone right next to our logo. Unique, thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing yeah, conversation and so insightful. And like you said, you know, this, this knowledge needs to be shared. People need to know this. And uh, that's also why I was so excited to to yeah, to have this conversation with you and to share it with a new female leaders community because I can speak from experience that it definitely empowers you uh, and empowers you in your authentic self to really nourish yourself according to the basic principles of our body, really, right? Yeah, it's working with your body. It's not having to go on some crazy cleanse or, you know, it's yeah. just really fortifying your diet with all the nutrients that it needs. So. Yeah, thank you so much, Unique. Oh, thank you so much. You are just absolutely wonderful and lovely. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.